Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to this week's recap video. I'm actually really thankful we have this video to do today because it is windy outside today. Like the sun is out, but it's chilly. Yeah. And we have, did you see 31 tomorrow night? Is it really? Mm -hmm. Oh, it's such a bummer. I know. So I'll probably have to run around and most of the things I've planted like in containers can handle that because that's considered a light frost. It's not until it gets to like 28. That's a heavy frost. Mm. So most everything can handle it. Like they might look a little sad in the morning and then they'll perk back up by midday usually. But What's our average frost date? Or last in frost May. day? Is it really in May? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh, so like, I mean, it's to be expected. It's just been so darn nice and we've been really taking advantage as much as we can of the nice weather. At least the sun is out. Yeah. But it's nice and cozy in here, so I'm thankful for that. Let's jump into last week's video, starting with planting ranunculus and anemones in the cut flower garden. So I had a bunch. I had the ones that I pre-soaked and sprouted, soaked and pre-sprouted <laughs> earlier on and potted them up out in the greenhouse just to see what kind of growth we could get on them, which they're way ahead of the other ones that I started. So I think we'll get blooms maybe three weeks earlier, possibly on those, I hope. So um, I took everything out into the cut flower garden and planted them kind of in shifts. Like I did the first section was the, the section that's ahead. And then the next section were the pre-sprouter ones that showed the most promise of growth. And then the last section was the ones that were the furthest behind. So maybe we'll have three flushes of bloom which will be really fun and then I did put some super hoops over them which are from Gardener Supply they're like these little black um, adaptable like they come in five pieces and you can use either three or you can use all five to make the hoop smaller or bigger so I put those over the whole rows and then some harvest guard I don't think it's called, called harvest guard it's like a garden that's not a quilt it's like summer weight fabric <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to call it. It's like a sheer white fabric that we clip to the sides. I'm sure it's a little stressed outside today with the wind, but we'll see. Anyway, super happy to have our first crop going out there. Sarah said that color is very complimentary on you. Not sure I've seen you wear any other color than black and white. So exciting to get crops in the cut flower garden. Thank you for saying that because after I watched the video, remember I told yeah, you, like, nope, that's, never, nope, that's never gone. Never again. <laughs> <laughs> that's in the donate pile. Uh, and it didn't come out true to color though in that video. Like it's a little darker color, like a kind of more of a wineish red. Yeah, you know, I almost feel like the GoPro that you've been using, like it doesn't get the colors quite right. No. Like everything is really orange and blown out. Yeah, like and blown there's out. no and I don't know if it's just this time of year. I think that's what it is. It could I think be. it's meant for like summertime. Yeah. So when you watch your videos, know like the colors actually look a lot better than they do. Honestly, even this morning's video, which was containers that I planted around, I showed I was showing some things in the back of the truck, and when I watched that back. That looks horrible. Yeah. It looks nothing like those flowers look in real life. I mean, you can't can't win them all, right? Yeah. GoPros are light and easy to move around and they're a lot more Laura proof yeah, than they don't other break. cameras. So yeah, you gotta take, I guess, take some a few negatives with the positives that using those bring. But thank you for saying that anyway, that was really sweet. Um, Lisa said, I have a random question not related to this video. I had to move my daughter's hostas in a hurry and didn't have biotone. Would it help or hurt to spread some and mix a little where I planted them? I'm putting land and sea over it. I'm in Kansas and there's been no growth yet. I absolutely wouldn't hurt a thing. Uh, you know, biotone, you do wanna make sure it can get around the roots as close to the roots as possible because that's where a lot of the action is going to happen. But you know, any fertilizer you put around the top, you're going to have to kind of scratch in, work in as much as you can and then water it in. Um, so I think biotone would be a great thing to add now. You could also use plantone. Either one would work really well at this point. Lauren said, where do you order your drip tape from? Dripdepot.com. I ordered two more rolls of it two days ago uh -huh. and it says it's going to be delivered today. Today? Yeah. I thought it was supposed to be a week. That's what it originally said. Oh, well. And then um, I got a notification that just said it's coming today. That is good news. I've been kind of, I've planted some other crops since this video. Um, you might may or may not see that video before this one goes out, but I'm planting them all in the same spot because that's the only spot we have drip tape run. And I, like in previous years, I've been okay with dragging hoses out every day to water specific things here and there. I told Aaron not this year. I'm not gonna, even if it's for an extra week, I don't want an extra thing on my plate or somebody else's plate. I just want to, wherever there's drip, that's where we plant. Mm -hmm. And you know, we'll figure something else out for the design. I was gonna do like cabbage lining the um, walkway up to the cut flower shed oh, like yeah. I did last year. And I ended up planting them not there because there was no drip tape there. But you know, you gotta make it easier on yourselves because when it, you start adding those things that add on extra time and just that a little extra burden, even if it's for a week or two, it starts to become not as fun. <laughs> so yeah. gotta keep it fun. Um, Julie said, just out of curiosity, when do you use the drip tape versus the drip tubing you use in your raised beds? 
We only really use the drip tape out in the cut flower garden and the reason we can use it out there, well one, it's way more economical, way cheaper to use it drip tape out there than the brown drip tubing, but you can go, with drip tape you go in straight lines. You can't really curve right. with drip tubing that's they brown. They do sell elbows, so if you're going in straight lines and and then doing a 90, uh -huh. you can do that. But if you ever need to, like, it doesn't work in flower beds because oftentimes you like curve yeah. flower beds. Mm -hmm. They're almost always curved. Right. So that it doesn't work for that. Drip tape has to lay flat. So that's why you can't curve it because it messes yeah. with the water. It's, it's weird too, because when we very first got drip tape, you know, the holes are on one side of the drip tape. And I just assumed that the holes would be facing down because that's where you want the water to run, right? And it's not, you have to face the holes up. So the water comes up out of the drip tape and then goes over the sides of the soil. Do you know why that is? Uh-uh, I don't. Sediment. So what happens is that oh. naturally you'll get some amount of sediment in yeah. your drip tape yeah and it'll all settle at the bottom and the water comes out the top but if it's flipped around the the little particles get stuck in the emitters right. and then they quit emitting if it's if it's face downward interesting well that makes sense uh heidi said why the row covers uh so the row covers are just for really protection from the wind more than anything else because i was putting plants out that really ranunculus like are zone seven and anemones are zone six and we really haven't been getting temperatures anywhere near the bottom range in those zones. Um, but the plants particularly that had been potted and growing on had been pampered in a greenhouse that's heated. I mean, some days it gets like 86, 90 degrees in there before we realize and like get everything. Well, even when the walls are up and stuff, it can be in the 80s yeah, in there. They can get warm pretty quick. Yeah. Um, so, and they hadn't really hadn't been subjected to much wind or anything like that. And I hate the process of hardening off. I don't know about you guys, but like moving stuff out every day and then back in, that's for the birds. I mean, if you had a table you could roll in and out every day, that would work perfect. But I'm, I'm trying to amp up my supply of like the, I love the super hoops, that's what I used. I think I just explained what those are uh, because you can use as few or as many as you need to, but I'm just gonna protect stuff when I put it outside. Um, and that way it can spend a week or two under the row covers and then I'll take the row covers off um, once they've had a chance. So like right now, I don't even have the row covers completely over them. I did for a few days, uh, just all the way to the ground on both sides, but then I lifted one side and I pinned it up top. So they only have half cover now. And so that's kind of gonna be my process of hardening things off. And once you have those super hoops uh, set up, you can just like keep them in a stack and then you just take them out and pop them in the ground way easier once you have them set up. Cause like I had to unbox all of those. Mm -hmm. It took me a long time. Yeah. I kind of forgot like how long, cause everything zip tied together. I kind of thought, oh, I should have done this before like I got cameras out and everything. Um, I should have done this like in an evening, but anyway, it worked out. Elizabeth said, if you have the drip tape up, won't, won't it get water spits on your flowers? Um, love your jacket color on you, thank you. Uh, it, they weep like very slowly. They it's don't not, spray. Um, you know those sprinklers that you would lay out that look kind of like drip tape? Yeah. yeah, and they spray up. Mm -hmm. It's not like that. No. You're right, they weep. They do. They're like a black soaker hose, mm -hmm. essentially. They, they weep slowly. So there's no water making any vertical movements. It's just like being pushed out and then over the sides. Uh, Margaret said, can you please tell me where you found the drip tape holder that first appears around 452? This would be a game changer on our farm. You know, it's, I, I think I got it from Home Depot, like you did last year, or the year before, but not at Home Depot. It was like online because Home Depot online sells a bunch of random stuff that they don't have in stores. Uh -huh. I, I seriously doubt you could find that same one that we have, but that's essentially what you're looking for. Didn't we try, we tried something in the back of the gator, didn't we? Or the, oh no, on a cart. We had cinder yeah. blocks. Yeah, cinder blocks. A cinder blocks and like a, a rod right. of some kind, which was which fine. Which works. Yeah. It's just not as handy. It's a lot more work to set up and the cinder blocks are heavy. Yeah. But that does work. Two cinder blocks because they've got the holes. So you, you set them up and then run a rod through it. Mm -hmm. And then you just stick your roll on that rod and it just rolls off. Yeah. Great. Uh, Scotty said, so you buy new drip tape every year. We do. I don't know that we always will, but uh -huh. like last fall we gave all of our drip tape away. Uh -huh. Um, we pulled it out and we were kind of like, do we want to save it or should we just give it to somebody who wants it? And we've given it twice. So the drip tape from yeah. the first year, mm -hmm. uh, when it was out in the middle of the, the field, we gave all that drip tape to your sister mm -hmm. and then all the other drip tape, I don't remember who it went to, but it, it was given to somebody who is using it still. Yeah. I think, um, I think I put it on like Facebook marketplace mm -hmm. for free and some gal just came and like quickly picked it up and 
was off. I don't remember her name or anything. Mm -hmm. So now that we have our space more in a solid location and we kind of are learning the process a little bit more of how we want to do things, um, we might just leave the drip tape down. I'm not sure what's going to happen, but like this year we thought. So the reason why we took it up last year is because we thought we were going to be tilling everything this right. spring. And we just thought, well, that's going to be a big mess and in the way we have time now. So let's get the drip tape up, give it to somebody else, and then the spots will be cleared and ready to go. And then you were asking me about when I wanted you to till and I just thought, ah. No dig. <laughs> no. You're a huge proponent of no dig now. Hey, hey, now. <laughs> now, so the nice thing about not tilling this year is that we have our beds pretty established where they need to go. I liked the spacing last year yeah. for the most part. I figured out that we're using two runs of drip tape instead of three per row and um, the pathways. So when you till the whole thing, like you just kind of have to till the whole thing. Mm. And then you've got these super fluffy, puffy, powdery, walkways again that you have to work on tromping down and at this point they're all tromped down really nicely and nice and hard you know pathways in between the rows which are still fluffy so I didn't even I got the mantis tiller out because I thought well I might need to till up a little bit when I was planting another crop in there and I didn't even use it mm. in fact it's still sitting out there so I'm <laughs> just laying, in, laying in bed last night and I'm like oh I left that out by the raspberry beds yeah. it's just sitting out there you hate that you hate when people leave stuff out I know I do it yeah. You just forget yeah. sometimes. Next video was removing the pondless waterfall and transplanting a bunch of perennials. I was super happy with how that day went because when I was sizing up that waterfall, I just thought, oh, if we at least get this done, it'll be great. Because, you know, Chad is on his way. He said he would have, not on his way today. Well, maybe. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, he might, yeah. He said he would have everything done that we have on his list by April the 15th. So it kind of just left this open window. He, I think he kind of is able to fit us in in between other projects, which is fine with us. Um, so I've been telling friends who are coming to get plants. They're like, well, can I come in a couple of days? I'm like, yeah, but I don't know if... <laughs> <laughs> if yeah. it'll still be here at that point and a lot of it's cleared though i have one more push i need to make mm. of transplanting things still but anyway um so we ended up getting the pondless waterfall moved it's all on pallets behind the orchard fence now just waiting for us to decide on the new location for it and then we ended up transplanting i think 18 perennials in the end which was awesome so mindy said so exciting to see what this garden around the hartley will become love having my coffee with you in the morning i'm excited as well i do have a vision for what's going to happen around the hartley and the reason why why the waterfall needs to move well one we didn't know when we put the waterfall in we still had the gazebo there we had no plans at that time to put in a greenhouse but when that opportunity presented itself we were like um yep let's yeah. do that and so at, you know once everything kind of started coming down around it there were a lot of bad things like when we i look back at tours i'm like oh that was beautiful like mm -hmm. it looks so lush but if you actually looked at the things if you looked at the pine trees that were full of blight or the junipers that were half dead there was a crab apple struggling like it was kind of halfway there there mm -hmm. was just a lot of really old things that just they were planted really close together and they needed to come out and it just became an opportunity like now it looks pretty stark around the greenhouse but not for long i'm so excited for what's going to happen around there but the uh, waterfall i tried to make my design work around it because I love it. I love the sound of it, I love the look of it, um, but it actually is right smack where a walkway <laughs> needs to be. Um, and I think that the style of that will fit in really well out in the South Garden where we have no water interest. Uh, and I think having a pondless waterfall type water interest way out there when you've got kids wandering around, I think that's really nice because I won't have any stress about it. If we had more of an open pond situation further away from the house, where like maybe I couldn't keep my eyes on it and as much, I think I'd be a little bit more stressed about it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Sure. Like, so there's really nothing that can happen with the pondless water. I mean, never say never, but there's no reservoir that's right. open to kids or, or things happening. So anyway, and the aesthetic I think will look good out there. Barbara said, that was a lot of work moving the rocks. Do you ever wish you had a hot tub to soak in after a hard, hard day's work? I actually never think about that. Yeah. I am not a hot tub person, I guess. I don't know, maybe it would be nice. Yeah. I have a I nice clawfoot bathtub that I do enjoy more before we had kids than I do now. <laughs> yeah. Do you ever, have you ever been, you've been in a hot tub. Yeah. Yeah. I run really hot anyway, and it's just almost like a sauna for me. Mm -hmm. Like, I would probably enjoy it though when it's cold out maybe, but then yeah. getting out of it is misery into the cold. Right. I don't know. Would you like to have one? Yeah. Uh, I can see the merits. It's not really something that I'm like, oh, geez, I really need that. You sure. Know? The maintenance so, of it all. Yeah. I'd just... almost rather have a swimming pool right. than a hot yeah. tub. 
I would like to have a uh, on staff masseuse, <laughs> massage therapist. <laughs> I wouldn't, I wouldn't uh, complain well, about can, that. Uh, there's people that'll like come to your house and do that. They'll Ooh. like bring a little table and stuff, right? That's a thing. I don't know who does that. Maybe not in our area. Maybe actually, but like I'll bet in the Boise area. So we move to Boise. Boise. Easy. <laughs> Easy. <laughs> and Miguel said, "What happened to the limelight hydrangeas you planted under the willow tree a while ago? Did did you remove them? No, they're still there, just hanging on. Are they I, really? Yeah, they are. The two front one. No, let's see. One of the front ones and the one kind of tucked behind do bloom. Oh yeah. Yeah. I was just over in that area yesterday mm -hmm. working on the drip. Yeah. Yeah, they're still there. They just don't show up super great right there. We found some drip, by the way, that's still running that has been there for maybe like ten years. It's kind of wrapped around the willow tree. Oh, is it? Uh, has the willow grown over it? Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Yeah. Interesting. Kim says it is crazy how much this area has changed in the last two years. It looks so lush and green, lots of shade. Wasn't there some trees around the waterfall? Where did they go? Can't wait to see the end result. Well, I just kind of address that a little bit. And I think in situations like these, like we do have a pretty good vision as to where it's going. Um, and it would be hard if it wasn't like if I was looking at somebody's else, somebody else's space being kind of like decimated, um, especially when it's so sunny and hot here, mm -hmm. you think, why would you want to get rid of that shade? You know? Well, you know, there was that, was an ash tree that was in front of the gazebo yes. um, that kept getting smaller and smaller uh -huh. every year because we kept cutting out all bores. the dead. Horribly but bad. I think that, that was one of the reasons that we were like, you know what, some of this stuff needs to go because you can struggle with it every year and just feel like I'm just barely limping this stuff along. And you along. have to use tons of insecticide. Yeah. Like you have to use tons of systemic on stuff like that that are borer prone. There's no other way to really handle it. Or if it. we plant the stuff that we want, you know, in 10 years, it'll, it'll be what we want. Yeah. And the fact that the Hartley will be used way more than I think we ever, Yeah. Use, we never used the gazebo. It just kind of sat there and it was always, so we have a lot of wind here. It was always filthy. Like the furniture yeah. in it was always filthy. You never wanted to sit on it. I mean, one windstorm that would bring in dust and it would just be covered. And so like, if you wanted to use it, you'd have to stop and clean everything first. It was just not, it was pretty, but not a super functional piece in our yard. Lori said, why are you remove beautiful pond and stream? It's embarrassing for pond company that works so hard on it. What a wasting money. <laughs> <laughs> just saying, uh, you know, I can, I can understand your perspective on that because I think when looking at a project like that, you would think, or maybe think that it's, it seems monumental. Like this is a huge project, but really when you look at what we do and what, you know, we make videos about garden projects, it takes a day, it took a day to put in. It'll take a day to put in somewhere else. It's kind of like a little blip on our schedule, really, yeah. you know, one day out of 365 and we will put it somewhere else. So it's not like a, I don't, it's not a waste because we're not throwing it's anything a, away. It's a waste of labor if you look at it so. that way. Yeah. But even though like we don't look at it as a waste of labor because it's like, you know, we'll, we'll be doing something else. Yeah. So just, and I think too, that there's a valuable, hopefully <laughs> a valuable lesson in seeing all of these projects that it, being flexible with your space is a really good thing to be, mm -hmm. um, because you never know when a tree is going to die. You never know when a tree is going to fall over in a windstorm. Um, you, if you don't like something, get rid of it or move it or whatever. Um, I think that that's good and it's okay. It's okay to do that. If you put something in and you just, you've lived with it for a while and you don't like where it's at, which is not the case with the pond. I loved that pond and I liked where it was at when it was in the setting that it was in. Um, but when that setting changed, we need to move it somewhere else where it's going to really fit in. So anyway, I understand that perspective for sure, but that's not how I see it at all. Next video is digging and potting up a ton of daffodils. So still kind of centering around this area. A lot of what we've been doing is centered around the greenhouse, but the brick patio, we've had a couple people come and get bricks. Did you see that hole underneath one of the bricks? Yeah. It looks like something's living under there. Maybe. It's like, okay, like so. Like a woodchuck. Well, I don't know how big of a hole a woodchuck would need. I think they're kind of bigger. Mm -hmm. This hole is like this big. So we were told that there's a concrete pad underneath the bricks, which there is like a really thin one. It's almost like a plaster. Yeah. Like it's not. Like a veneer. Like yeah. a concrete veneer over dirt. I don't know, because it's broken in some spots. And you can stick a shovel, like underneath there's a little concrete ledge thing. There's the bricks and like a concrete ledge, and then there's a hole. And you can stick a shovel and it kind of just keeps going. Like, where does this go? Like, is this going to cave in? And then underneath another section, there's just like a huge animal hole. I don't know. 
be interesting when ch once Chad actually takes stuff yeah. out. Anyway, in that space, there's a circle-shaped brick raised bed um, where we planted some firelight hydrangeas, which have gone to a friend's house since this video, and um, there's daffodils. So there's the frosty snow was on the top level, and that's what I dug up. I don't remember how many we had, maybe 600 in there or 500 in that space. Mm -hmm. um, and then down in the lower level, there's some hawaras, which I've been moving to containers and things. So. Anyway, I moved all of those daffodils to the two big black square pots that flank the entrance to our cut flower garden because I had nothing planned for those pots. It was perfect. Uh, the Plantastic Nerd said the fact that you're always giving away stuff you long no longer need, whether it's plants, bricks, wood, or whatever, to people nearby is so heartwarming. Your sense of community makes me smile with each video you do. In fact, you've inspired me so much, I went ahead and gave my neighbors all of my extra necklace I've pre-sprouted so they can also enjoy them on their balconies. That's awesome. Thank you for the rays of love and inspiration you're spreading. P.S. Fingers crossed for those dafts. And P.P.S. The final scene with both kitties was just cherry on top. Oh, I forgot about that. I placed a pot. I had a few extra daffodils left that we put in a little uh, concrete container with some violas. When I went and placed it, both of the cats were sleeping. Yeah. It looked so like peaceful. When people ask, what are the cats doing? That's where you'll find them. They're curled That's up it. on some chair. I was looking out the front porch last night. We've got a new kitty, mm -hmm. a black and white one, all curled up on one of the chairs up there. It's like the word is out. We've got the comfy furniture yeah. <laughs> and the food. Um, Jill said, will you need to move Benjamin's butterfly garden? Yes, we will. I'm not sure where we, where we will move Benjamin's butterfly garden at this point, but somewhere. You knew it was going yeah, to go Yeah, it was, and I said that. When we put it up, I said it's this temporary for this year. It's going to probably move somewhere else, uh, which it held up. Yeah. For how... Didn't you make it all out of pallets? <laughs> yes. Yeah. And for how poorly, like, there's no legit posts that these things are attached to. Like, the four corner posts are two by fours, not four by fours, and they're not anchored at anything other than soil. Mm. And they're not anchored that far either. Well, they're treated, so... I don't think those were treated. Oh, those really? pallets? Mm -mm. I thought the four by four posts were treated. I don't have four by four posts. Oh. They were made with wood from the, like every scrap of wood wow. was from the pallets. That was the point. I wanted to like Dang. challenge myself, like I can do this out of yeah. pallets. Oh, do you remember that video it kind of was a disaster? Yeah. We lost one of the video cards and it was like the whole construction. Yeah. Like I made the panels in the barn and then I took them all out and put them all together and we lost the card where I put mm -hmm. it all together. So sad. I have a feeling one of these days we're going to see it in the gravel. Like yeah. it'll catch one of our eyes because I think I had a bunch of stuff like a stack of things and I had the cards on top and one of them fell off. Mm -hmm. Dumb, dumb. Ugh. Denise said, have you thought about calling Habitat for Humanity and see if they can use the leftover bricks if no one else wants them? Just an idea. It's so much effort to get rid of the bricks, like to lift them. Um, we've already put the word out both to friends and family and on Facebook Marketplace. Like anybody who wants the bricks mm -hmm. can come, come take them. Um, we've had a few people that are like, yeah, I'm going to come grab them. And we told them the same thing that like, well, Chad's going to be here at some point mm -hmm. so they're just going to be gone so if you want to get here before that have at so we've we've put the word out i feel like anybody who wants them at this point has had an opportunity there's still a couple people who say they're going to come get them yeah. so we'll see what happens but you know a lot of those bricks some of well some of them are actually not that easy because they're they were put in with some kind of concrete or yeah like a grout or something that's got really strong I don't know. So they're like stuck together and mm -hmm. then you have to chip off this stuff from the sides. I don't know. Uh, they don't seem super usable um, to me. But uh, Danny said, could that brick area be an old well? I've heard that suggestion. I've heard like a cistern. Is that mm -hmm. a well? Is that What is a cistern? I don't know. Look it up. <laughs> I gotta Google that. Is that dumb that I need to look that up? A tank for storing water, mm. especially one supplying taps or as part of a flushing toilet. Interesting. Um, I've also heard that it could be the base of like a silo. Yeah. I mean, all of those things are good suggestions. I have no idea. I have no idea what we're going to find when we actually get the soil and stuff off the top of that area. This this property, so the house, the old side of the house built in 1919 mm -hmm. and a thousand acres surrounding, surrounding it used to belong to this house and it was a sheep farm. So that's kind of the history of the land around us and then eventually like, you know, land got sold off and... Mm -hmm. Uh, other people started building and such, but yeah. So who knows? Yeah. House Warman said, when do you expect the construction to begin? Any day now. I know that, um, so my stone for the Hartley floor, which 
that was it was a little bit of a feat to find that i feel like we got really lucky mm -hmm. really lucky because i really wanted real stone but i wanted it cut and they call it snapped um and i needed it to be thick and this stone we're getting is like four inches thick like that's I so thick i know well he well benny said i don't want anything less than two mm. three inches would be I ideal but i think this is ranging between three and four inches and um ontario rock and landscape who we're ordering it through she said she got a stellar deal on it so mm. like all the planets aligned at the right time but then she contacted me because it should have been here by now but she said the trekking company, because you know, there's been some hard, shipping is hard right now. And it was gonna be like a thousand extra dollars to get it here two weeks earlier. And mm. Penny's like, well, I have a lot of work to do. Why don't we just like save the thousand dollars and uh, let's get it here like first week of April. Mm. So hopefully by the end of April, we have a floor in there. I don't know, I, I try not to be, I don't really think about how long it's taking, I guess, mm -hmm. because like everything seems to take a long time and that's okay. I'm going to be okay with the process yeah. and try to enjoy because there's, there's a lot of other things to focus on. Um, and honestly, it gives us time to save <laughs> like all those things. When yeah, things take right. longer, you have more time, m more time to get your ducks in a row for all of it. Also, it's saved me too from making too hasty of decisions. And had I picked out the floor earlier, I would have gone with something more manufactured like. because I just couldn't find what I wanted. And I'm so glad it took the time it did because then the right stuff showed up. Molly said, do you think Chad watches these videos and goes, oh, they're still not ready for me yet. Got a few more things to get out of there. <laughs> I don't know, he is so busy, you guys. And all of you that are local who watch our videos, you guys are keeping him busy too. So yeah. he's probably at one of your houses doing something right now. And they're, they've been busy since I've ever known yeah. them. Um, Chad was just a few years ahead of me in high school. He was out by the time I was in high school, um, but like fairly close-ish. But I think that he and his brother I don't know if they run, I don't know what, the, what the, <laughs> the situation is. Either way, they're always super busy. And Chad and his wife and family, they bought a place out in the country that they're changing into an event center. Mm -hmm. Like this big, gorgeous pond. It used to be an old like stagecoach stop and there was the old building from it. Mm -hmm. And they just built a big, uh, beautiful barn where they hold events and they've just been really working a lot on that. So we've gone out a couple of times. And so when they're not busy with work, work, they're busy with their work, yeah. so we're lucky we get to have them here. Next video was planting spring containers and hellebores. So I started off with a gator full of just gorgeous things, not knowing exactly what we were gonna get done. I just wanted to start at one container and work my way around until my plants were gone. And we ended up getting, um, how many containers? Do you remember, Aaron? was it 11? Did I plant 10 or 11 containers, I think? I also dug some daffodils up for that uh, from behind the Hartley. And then we did plant the hellebores as well, so I probably need to water them. I didn't water them yesterday, and it's been windy. Uh, Kayla said, I absolutely love the kitchen window box. It's just perfect. So springtime, full of color, and makes you smile. That did turn out really well, and that's your favorite, isn't it, Erin? Mm -hmm. You are telling me the other night. I kind of wish that you would have done that in all the window boxes, because that's striking. It, it's, wow, that's a lot of window boxes. Yeah. <laughs> you imagine, because I packed that thing Bowl. Yeah, it looks like it. Yeah, it is very abundant. But when you think about it, like the bulbs won't last for very long. We'll mm -hmm. be pulling stuff out of there here in a month and a half mm -hmm. to get ready for summer stuff. This lemon cypress will probably stay, but a lot of it will go out. The perennials will be planted out in the garden and uh, the lettuce and stuff will harvest and either eat or give to the chickens. That's what we do with all the lettuce I use in containers. I did talk about that though, I think in that video, um, really inexpensive things to put in containers for fillers. Well, violas are usually fairly, and pansies are fairly inexpensive. You can get in four and six packs, but also lettuce. You can get so many pretty varieties and it looks so springtime. And they usually fill in just absolutely beautifully, especially head type lettuce. Um, I love using it in containers. Coco D said, how are your shoes always clean? Do you wash them? I don't actually, unless they get really muddy and then I'll stick my whole foot with my shoe on underneath the hose, yeah. usually just hose them off quick. I noticed that you don't wear socks. Does it bother you when dirt gets in your shoes? It doesn't. Um, I grew up in bare feet, so I'm actually a step up from that now, wearing some protective footwear. Did you grow up feral? A little bit. <laughs> a little bit. Um, Down Sprig Lane said, may I ask what you mean by cherry blossom stock? I see the tree, but not a flower. Thank you. Cherry blossom is the variety name of a specific type of stock that my mom got for me, and I think I showed it. Uh, it was in the seat. Uh, it's just an annual flower. 
Actually, I have some seeds started in the greenhouse of stock, but it's a beautiful, cool season loving crop that produces like clove smelling blooms. And my mom has just made it a tr tradition over the past several years. She just brings me a flat of it. On a random spring day, she shows up with a flat of stock. And then she usually takes a, a flat of the same stock home to their house and plants it. It's a fun, fun tradition for me. <laughs> I love it. Christy said, at the start of your video, I noticed the browning on the boxwoods and the urns on the west side. Do you need to cut the browning off or will they green up themselves now the weather is warmer over there? One of them's dead. The one on the very far end, it's got a tiny bit of life in it. And the other three have their winter color, which is a bronze color. I think I might move those out. I think I'm ready. We put those in there last spring. One year? Spring. Well, there's so many, there's so much opportunity to plant evergreens out in the south garden that it doesn't... Like being able to use them in a container first, you kind of get double duty out of mm -hmm. them because then you get a year of enjoyment in containers and then you can move them out and enjoy them in your landscape. You know, if you're buying things for your containers anyway, being able to use them twice like that, I feel like is a, yeah. a good deal. Uh, Terry said, do you actually harvest the lettuces as they grow or are they just ornamental? Uh, you know, we have lettuce growing out in the garden. At this point, um, I would probably harvest a little bit of it as it starts to grow, but all the, most of the time I let it go to the very end. And usually it's really nice right at the very end and we can eat it. Um, or like I said, we give it to the chickens and they love it. Next video is moving concrete, planting pots, and then a mini impromptu plant tour at the garden center. It was kind of a, a little bit of a chaos video because it happened over the course of two days. And whenever I do that, when, when I'm watching the video back, I end up cutting out a ton of my talking because I can't remember from one day to the next sure. what I've said. And a lot of time, because I want to make sure that I explain things, so I'll say it twice, sometimes three times. And so I'll end up cutting out a lot of that. But we, well, I got distracted when I went down to the garden center because they had so many brand new things in that were beautiful. And then we had family show up uh, from out of town who we hadn't seen in years. Like, years. So we stopped everything and visited with them for a while. Um, anyway, we moved the four large concrete containers uh, from the far end of the east fence line where that kind of triangle shaped garden, we call it the corner garden or the triangle garden, is it's got the gravel around it. It's kind of a confusing area. It confuses almost everybody who's mm -hmm. new to our driveway. They kind of stop there. We watch them. It used to be kind of fun and then it, now it's kind of, kind of become like we need to eliminate this frustration for everybody. Yeah. Um, it just looks like it's a continuation of the driveway when it's actually not. So Chad's going to remove the gravel from that area and we are going to plant a lot of the things that we have held in that we had delivered earlier on. In fact, we have the skid steer scheduled. We'll have it all week next week. And I yep. told Aaron, but end of next week. We'll have all everything, be planted. all of it will be planted. You know, in that area, I feel like we should put it on Chad's list to take all the boxwoods out too while he's got the skid steer. In yeah, you area. guys were very encouraging in the comment section too because I feel like we've laid waste to so many areas of this garden and they've all been for a reason. It's all because of diseased, insect ridden or struggling things that just we are having a hard time rebounding. Like the, the furthest, the, the um, boxwood hedge that runs parallel to the fence, that one's looked bad since day one, mm -hmm. since the day we moved in here. Um, and we found that the water was completely plugged to that area. I don't know why we didn't invest. There was so much going on. Oh, we yeah. just didn't investigate every little thing. Uh, we've tried to recuperate it. It just looks horrible. But you guys were like, yeah, I think that <laughs> it's time. You should probably get rid of those and maybe start over. So that's always encouraging for me to hear because, you know, we try to show our garden in the best light possible. I mean, I think everybody does. So, you know, a lot of times when we're doing tours, we're doing them on like really overcast days or days where the lighting makes even struggling things look a little bit better. Um, but even the previous owners who are family friends of ours, when we bought the house, they were just starting to gear up. And I've told you about this, but they were gearing up to start pulling out a bunch of stuff, mm -hmm. trees, privet hedging, um, which, you know, well, it did create a lot of work for us. It was kind of a, a fun thing because then we get to decide what goes back in those yeah. places. Um, Anyway, there's there have just been a lot of things like the Scarlet Curls Willow that was in the back corner of the formal garden. We didn't put it in any video, but we did have that removed. It was just riddled with spider, like not just riddled, covered. Like no Every spot, year. No spot on that tree would be free from spider mites every single year. Um, and then it was also dying in sections. So the, the borers are pretty bad in our area for willows. And unless you like really stay on them um, with insecticide at the right time, then, you know, it can be a problem. Ash trees, birch trees, all of those are prone. Lilacs are prone. Anyway, uh, it is a hard thing sometimes 
but I know that in the end we're going to be adding in things that are more resistant, that are better for our area, that don't require so much either water or fuss maintenance, all of those things. JM Wood said, so excited to see all the progress. The drone footage was priceless. It gave me a good laugh to start my day. Yeah, so the drone crashed into the mulberry tree. Yeah. How many drones have you gone through? Well, you know, I've, what I do, I've crashed several drones. A lot of times what I'll do is I will crash a drone, I'll send it in to get fixed, and then I'll sell it, because I'll, at that point, have already bought a new one. The, the next drone. Yeah. Um, so once I get the drone back, you know, they'll like send another unit or whatever. And yeah, that's probably what I'll do here too. Yeah, that was a bummer. But you did get some really fun, like a, a fun aerial kind of of where we yeah. were going and how we were moving them around. Uh, Lynn said, I love my English daisies and they bring such a pleasing look. Question, what happens to the concrete pads that Ern sat on? Can they be moved out to the cut garden too? I hadn't really thought about that, but I'm not sure that they could be moved because there's la la uh, layers. They can't. Yeah. I mean, I think... It's not a... They it's fall not, apart. They just fall apart. Yeah. yeah. Because there's layers. There's like a sand layer, a gravel layer, kind of like a patio. And then you lay the bricks. There's like the berry, plastic barrier they put in. Mm -hmm. And then um, that polymeric sand. But that's not strong enough to all stay together. And the layers beneath would just fall away. Right. Um, so Chad will just be... We'll probably grab the bricks, but he will be scraping it off with everything else. Thelma said, the pots look so pretty. Where are you going to put the trees? The trees. The Probably the hilled in trees. Oh, well, a lot of them will go in the area where the box was in the pots came from. A lot of them will go along the back fence line of the formal garden area. And I did explain as well in the, the beginning of this video that we're going to be taking the fence out between the garden and the driveway because uh, the back formal garden and the driveway. It's been kind of a no man's land, kind of this area that we'd never go to. There's no reason to go there. Um, right now, here's my struggle. I have a very clear vision for what that space could be if the round formation of boxwoods was not there. And it's kind of this albatross of a round boxwood area, but I love it. So I'm having this super big internal battle as to what to do. Like, do I design around this thing or do I make it work for what, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Aaron's like, just remove it. Well, here's, <laughs> here's my perspective. It's beautiful. You know, it's, it's alive. There's nothing wrong with it. But if you have an area in your garden that you never go to, it's not bringing you joy. It's, you know, it's, it's like cool that it's there, but you never really see it because you don't go back there for any reason. There's nothing that beckons you back. And I don't like the fact that it's right in the middle yeah. because it makes you decide which way you're going to have to go. You have to go around one side or the other mm -hmm. and it's just too narrow. It's, it next it's to everything too big. Down. It's yeah. too big of a formation for that space. So I think it just, it needs to go. It needs to go just given the fact that we never use that space. I think that you should make your space usable, like in the South Garden where we put in that loop. Like we walk that we all do. the time. Yeah. Because there's a clear entrance and an exit. Yeah. And it's really fun to walk and like, you know, hey, this forsythia is still yeah. yellow, you yeah. know? Mm -hmm. um, we do walk know? out there a lot in the evenings with the kids. Yeah. I think we need to do something similar to that mm -hmm. in that space where it's walkable, a place you could drive the gator through. That way and, we'll see that space more often. Yeah, I think that the problem is with me is that I'm always saying, you know, if you don't like something, remove it. It's, it's not that I don't like it. I love that box of formation. The fountain's broken and doesn't work in the center of it. Uh, but just the formality and the, the boxwoods have always been, they've never really given me issues mm -hmm. where a lot of boxwoods do. Um, like, do you I, think they could be saved? Could you... We thought about seeing if Chad and Benny could collaborate and if we could lift the whole thing up and put it behind the Hartley, but I think it's just too big. Mm -hmm. I think it would dominate the space and it's dominating the space it's in right now and that's kind of the problem. I don't know. I need encouragement in, the, <laughs> in that area. Uh, Donna Matrix said, I was just saying, who's running the drone? How are they getting all this? And right then Aaron says, it hit the tree. He answered me. Yeah. Well, so I was, I was flying it. However, it was on autopilot. Mm -hmm. So you can, with drones nowadays, you can like circle an object and um, it'll just follow that object as it moves. So that's what it was doing. And I think because it, the tree didn't have any leaves in it, normally it's like an obstacle avoidance, mm. but it, it just couldn't figure out what to do and went mm -hmm. right into the tree. So. <laughs> kind of like the power line that one time. No, that was 100% me. Was it? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I was getting a 
a sick shot too. <laughs> Were you? Yeah, because I was like pulling back and it was like a really cool shot and I just wasn't paying attention to where it was going. I remember that. That was in early days too. Yeah, it when was. you told me, I'm like, oh. <laughs> a monk's nature said, did the lamppost in the bird bath get moved off camera or did it get backburnered? Backburnered, for sure. I think I said that in the end. It just became, you know, the whole planting of the containers and everything, it became a bigger project than. I had anticipated sometimes that happens, so we should move those. Maybe maybe we'll do that today since it's windy and kind of a bad day to be planting other things. Jake Jones said, I'm assuming you're going to leave the brick pads you had installed for those pots you moved, right? I mean, even if you convert that entire area, including the triangle garden, you could still use those pads to mount other pots or even statuary, no? You know that is a really good idea. You could leave them there for something like that, but the, the problem with that area, leaving them up close to the fence, we would I would use them if they were maybe further out because we're gonna be creating a very thick mixed border, kind of starting where those pots were and then swinging around the whole back of the formal garden along our back fence line. Um, I really want to create a beautiful green backdrop for the greenhouse, really, and for, for our view. Um, we can see, I mean, we see our neighbor's house. We like our neighbor and they take good care of their um, property and they have beautiful horses that I love to look at. But I would love to look through the, like the greenhouse and see just a beautiful bank of trees and fall color and winter interest and all of that um, every different season. So. I don't know. Yeah. I think that's kind of the thought. Also shade. <laughs> we want to get as much shade going as we can. Mm -hmm. Okay, the last video from this week is actually from this channel. So Aaron has been putting together, you've put together two videos. Mm -hmm. And the first one, you didn't. we didn't answer questions from. No. I don't know why we didn't do that. Maybe because it was just new and we weren't used yeah, to it. Yeah, right. Um, so this one is first time aerating our lawn, sweep all, pull behind aerator impressions. Um, so Aaron is going to be putting together a few more videos. They may end up going on the main channel. We were just kind of trying out to see what you guys thought of them. Um, and I'm I kind of like having them on the second channel though. I love having somebody else making videos. It's so <laughs> awesome. <laughs> and the fact that you are more comfortable now, which you are, you're way yeah. more comfortable in front of a camera. Well, I'm still not co that comfortable in front of a camera, which is why these videos I've been doing like voiceover. Because I can just film doing it and then film me talking. Mm. Now we don't like say stupid things in the moment. I feel like, because I always cut, I cut out so much of my talking if I'm ever in videos. That's the thing, you guys, too. I've noticed some comments about how, like, during our recap videos, <clears throat> somebody has said in the past about how, like, I rein you in and don't let you express your thoughts and things. He cuts himself out. Yeah. Like, he expresses all of his thoughts, but he goes through and he leaves in what he's comfortable with, which I'm fine with. Even if it makes me look like I'm cutting you off and yeah. <laughs> so on. <laughs> you know. First comment was from Allison. Aaron, while I'm not in the market for an aerator, I truly appreciate how honest and informative you are in describing the pros and cons of the new toy. You give your honest opinion, and I know all of us Garden Answer watchers admire your approach and easy manner. As always, looking forward to seeing you and Laura in the next videos. Very nice, thank you. Really nice. Samantha said, excellent review. Will you be using that on your established grass? Yeah, I did. I just didn't film. You know, like I did it out in the formal garden and, and all that. Mm -hmm. I mostly just filmed kind of in one spot. Mm -hmm. It's easy up in that big front lawn. Yeah. Um, Patty Westridge said, love, love Aaron doing a video by himself. He did great. Aaron, this might be a dumb question, but how are you doing the drone and driving the tractor at the same time? Autopilot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they have, uh, they have a feature where you can just have it follow you around, which is nice. Yeah. It might hit a tree and it might break the drone. <laughs> so there you go. Diana said, I love the detailed and honest description of your review. Do you have, do you or have you ever dethatched, dethatched, is dethatched or is it thatched? Dethatched. Dethatched mm -hmm. your lawn Because there is thatch and you're trying to dethatch it. Oh, that does make sense. I've never heard that or seen that word written before maybe. Yeah. I don't know. Have you ever dethatched your lawn before? Never. I, I, maybe that's something I should try. I thatched our lawn in the last house. By added hand. a bunch of thatch on there? Thatched it? Oh, I dethatched it. Dang it. <laughs> I dethatched it. Yes. Did really? you remember how much dead, uh, like, brown underneath? Did we rent a dethatcher or? No, how? I did it by hand with a rake. Really? Yeah. Well, it was small enough that you could do it. It was. That. But I remember, like, gathering up just big armloads of that oh, brown grass. I have grass. no memory of that. I do. <laughs> <laughs> Sally said, now that you've aerated, is it time to fertilize? Yeah, I'm going to be doing that. So that is actually going to be Aaron's next video, I think, yeah, right? Yeah, probably. 
Uh, Dead Free Dana said, hoping for a spring lawn treatment video this year from you because I was told Espoma discontinued gypsum. Really? Yeah, I think that might be true. Um, so gypsum isn't like an exclusive Espoma product. No. Like gypsum is just like a, it's not an element or a, yeah. like what is it? Is that it's an like element? It's calcium, right? She should be knowing this stuff. I feel like this is stuff we know, we just yeah, don't retain. Gypsum is like something gathered from the earth. Gypsum is soft sulfate mineral composed of calcium sulfate. Yeah. Dihydrate with the chemical formula CASO42H2O. It's so, yeah, lots of people uh, sell it. Mm -hmm. Espoma was just selling it because, you know, it's a. A thing that people it want. In. It fits in with what mm -hmm. they they sell, but you can get it from anybody. Mm -hmm. Not anybody, but people who make gypsum. Mm -hmm. Margaret said, "How is it now with all your dust storms? Does all the lawn help stop it from flying around?" Like completely, oh. pretty much. Yeah, it is amazing the difference. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And this is the last comment. Byron said, "We are needing to do this to our yard. Drainage has been a problem." Did I see Benjamin or Samantha riding on your lap for a short way? Yeah. Yeah, uh, Benjamin rode. It's it's tough because Benjamin's getting heavier. Like, I can't believe how heavy he is. Mm -hmm. But he was wanting to ride on the tractor with me. So, yeah. yeah. He enjoys that. And Samantha loves to ride in the tractor. Yeah, she does. It's funny because her uh, sign for more, like more when she wants more food, is this. Yeah. And the first time he uh, Aaron took the kids on a tractor ride around, she got back and he op Aaron opened up the door and I was going to grab her. And she's like, mm-hmm. Yeah. More, like she wanted more. She wanted to go around more. And so yeah. you went around a few more times and she loved her life. We need to get her some little, uh, like we, we never do it for very long, uh, like increments. We need to get her some earmuffs. For outside, in, some, inside the cab of the tractor, it's not very loud. So that yeah. was okay, but she can't ride on the lawnmower. That's too loud, yeah. I think. So I need to get her some. And um, I've actually before, I've put uh, noise canceling earbuds in Benjamin's ears mm -hmm. and play like... Um, you Farmer, know, in kid, the Dell. Farmer in the Dell. Yeah, and he wanted to listen to it. He probably listened to it like 30 times. Mm -hmm. And he every time he looked at me, play it again. <laughs> so, it's pretty cute. Yeah, it is cute. And that's it for this week's videos. Awesome. We, we'll have a fun lineup, I think, this next week. Well, we have a fun lineup of projects, you know, getting all of those big trees placed and planted. I am such a visual person that I think we're going to have to pick up the trees and kind of arrange them, like set them down and maybe move them a little bit here and there. Mm -hmm. And it'll be nice to not have the skid searcher for just one day, because typically we, we rent it for one day. Mm -hmm. um, and we're kind of like, got to know it. where things are going. We have it all week. <laughs> yeah. So I think the stress level will be a little bit down. And we've been working a lot, like Paul and Aaron have been look, working on our drip system, getting that up and running and getting repairs made so things can get water. Um, I don't know. We're just working out all the spring kinks right now. And there's a lot of fun things going on. So. Anyway, yeah. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I do hope you enjoyed it and we will see you in the next one. Bye.